Hello, good evening everybody and welcome back to the channel. We've got a Patreon request from Callum James, who's an absolute legend. For those of you on Patreon, you might have seen him in the comments on the so the pig blinders and the young ones and sometimes even on the bottom reactions. He's the one always commenting the uh, you know the trivia stuff, information, little tidbits that I absolutely love reading comments like that, you know, behind the scenes stuff. Yep, it's it's him, and he's requested that I uh, check out a song called on right the the group's called Sabaton, so the song's called 1916. I have heard the name Sabaton, but I've never listened to them. Um, but I've seen them knocking about on YouTube. You know, they pop up in your recommended sometimes, but I've never bothered to check them out. So um, yeah, I guess we'll just get into this. So this is 1916 by Sabaton for Callum James. Let's do it. <clears throat> to that old London bus. Sixteen years old when I went to the war to fight for a land fit for heroes. God on my side and a gun in my hand, chasing my days down to zero. And I marched and I fought. And I bled and I died And I never did get any older But I knew at the time That a year in the line Was a long enough life for a soldier Wow That that's a little uh, nod to how in World War One, yeah, there was loads of kids underage lying about their age just so they could go and fight. I think the youngest one they found was twelve years old. I don't know if he was British or French or what, but I'm pretty sure they found details. They connected like the name to someone's birth records and it turned out that he was 12, told them he was 16 or 18 or however old you had to be to join. Yeah, it's awful. Hey, the way 
this is some of the most powerful shit I've ever heard. And it's interesting how it, Callum's asked for this now with everything that's going on. Because they reckon that we're going to be uh, <coughs> doing this pretty soon. Doing it again, aren't we? I mentioned it in the beginning of a video. I said I was going to make a video on, you know, the the main story in the news right now in the UK. For those of you that don't live in the UK, mind you, it might be, I don't, no, it won't, no, actually no, it won't be the same for you if you live in America or wherever, because at least you're still recruiting people. But yeah, the main story in the UK right now is that they're thinking about bringing conscription back to f get ready for a war with Russia. So it's interesting how you've asked for this at this point in time. But I've already said I wouldn't spill a single drop of blood for this country or its government. No. I won't fight for a country that doesn't care about me. The British Army suffered 57,470 casualties to gain three miles of territory. 57,000 people for three miles of land. One man was killed every 4.4 seconds. Largest loss of life suffered by the army in a single day. It's quite fitting that I've got my granddad's war medals just sat there. <laughs> Nineteen thousand Englishmen were killed before noon. A whole generation destroyed in three hours. Entire towns in northern Lancashire and South Yorkshire had a whole generation of men completely wiped out. <laughs> Lemmy Kilminster, Motorhead. Rest in peace, Lemmy. One million in one battle, 300,000 killed for six miles of ground. And for what? Just, just to come back ten years later, no, twenty years later and do it all again.
they've all got, you know, they didn't have a speaking part, the soldiers, but they've all got names, so I assume that's because they were all based on real soldiers. Why else would they name them? You know, they'd just be extras. They wouldn't even have their names put on the cast list. So they must be based on real soldiers. Surely that's what that must be signifying. That's a really cool touch if that's the case. <laughs> Leonidas. <laughs> and it's, you know, quite symbolic that they don't, you don't, they don't speak. Because we never heard them speak. Yet they did more for us than the past however many generations before and after. I don't know if that's what they were intending. I mean there's music videos like this where they have a break in the song to have a you know, a dialogue between the actors in the video, so they could you know, they they have chose not to do that. So is that what they were going for? Is that the symbolism behind that? They won't speak. You won't. You won't know their voice, just their names, because that's how it is in war. The soldiers that die, you only know their names and maybe their faces. Like in Afghanistan, when that war was going on, I remember it as a kid. I remember practically every time the six o'clock news came on, there'd be a new picture and a new name. Someone killed by an IED. Or, you know, whatever method. Rock fans. Everybody. really powerful but it, you know it, there's one about the Christmas troops might have to take a look at that but yeah it, how many times have we done something like this there's literally hundreds thousands of Films, TV shows, documentaries, music videos, stories, you name it. But we never learn. It just continues. You know? We never... I mean, it... It says a lot, really, if... Both of those world wars isn't enough of a lesson. If we can't learn from that to never allow anything to happen that could possibly lead to a third instance of of that from happening, then what are we doing? What's the point?
stupid. He did mention when he told me about this that he wanted me to do this that it's emotional. I could very easily have allowed myself to get emotional, but I'm not going to sit here feeling sorry for myself when it's you know based on a subject like that because. No, that's not, I don't think that's right. But it was powerful. And I felt it. Big time. I just, you know... Most of what you're hearing in the news, it's all it's scaremongering. You know, the military-industrial complex and all that. But... It's just the way things are going, adding up, happening. It's very similar to World War One or World War Two. These little conflicts all over the place, and then Russia. You know, there's war in Europe. When was there hasn't been war in Europe on that kind of scale since World War Two? And you can't count what happened in Serbia. That was like a civil war. This is. Actual, one European country invading another. The last country to do that was Germany when they invaded Poland. That's where we're at now. And then you've got Israel and, you know, China and Taiwan and America on the, literally on the edge of civil war. It's just... <sighs> I'll be very surprised if I'm sat here in 2035 and we either haven't had a war that's at least halfway on a global scale or that we're not currently going through one at that time I'll be very surprised because that's what it feels like it's heading towards and you remember that other video that I put up the other day about billionaires building underground bunkers in preparation for the the event you know keep getting mixed messages from the media some saying that a big pandemic's coming 10 times worse than covid and then you know there's other signals saying that world war 3 is around the corner you don't know which to believe but something's on the way definitely and it's no accident it's just not don't believe what the media tell you, how they make it look like our government's clueless, every other government's clueless. The Conservatives are not incompetent. Everything that's happened in this country in the last 20 years, it has been absolutely no accident. It's been planned, it's intentional, this is what they want. I'm telling you. I might sound like a right-wing conspiracy theorist, but I don't care, because it's true. There's even a fucking agenda, a paperwork, what's it called? Agenda 2030. Go and read that. Everything that's going on. You know. Inflation and all, all this shit that's making people even more reliant on social services and, you know, help from the government. It's all planned. Anyway. Thanks, Callum, for that. It was, yeah, that was very deep. I enjoyed it. The uh, the singer had a very standout, unique voice. It reminds me a bit of Tommy Vexed, just a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. So thanks for that, Callum. I hope this reaction was what you're hoping for. I hope I didn't let you down. Um, so I guess all that's left to say is, yeah, thanks again. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks, Callum. If you'd like to make a request, um, at the moment I'm only accepting requests from patrons and one-time donation requests because I've got that much content to do, I just simply can't take free requests. Um, but I am lowering the price for one month. So in February, it's going to be £1 for a request instead of £2. two pounds. So you either send that and then your request, or join the Patreon for one dollar a month. It's up to you which one which you want to do. But obviously, joining the Patreon for a dollar for the month 
it's going to be a better value for money because you're going to get your request and a lot of content. So thanks everybody for watching um, and I will see you next time. Let's hope that we uh, get some peace over the next few years. eh? Vote accordingly. Just don't vote for Labour because they love war. Good night.